Now we're going to look at a few examples of application problems that deal with exponential growth or exponential decay. Now the key here is to try and come up with an exponential equation that matches the information given in the problem uh, and then use that equation in order to uh, solve for some unknown value. So we want to keep in mind uh, that exponential functions we know can be, re can be written in the form y equals a times b to the x. And the b value we know represents the rate of uh, growth or rate of decay. Uh, the a value represents our initial amount or initial value. So in this case, we're looking at a new car that costs $24,000. And the car loses 18% of its value uh, every year after, after it's purchased. Now this is called depreciation, when an object decreases in value over time. Okay, so our initial value, we're starting out at a cost of $24,000. Uh, so we can uh, use that as part of our equation. Now, instead of Y, I'm going to write V here to represent the value of the car. Now this car is losing 18% of its value, so we know that the rate here for the B value uh, has to be a number between 0 and 1 because it's losing 18%. If it was gaining 18%, it would be a growth rate, meaning the B value would have to be greater than 1. Right? But because it's losing 18%, that B value has to be less than 1. And in fact, because it's losing 18% of its value, that means it's keeping a uh, hundred percent minus eighteen percent, so it's keeping eighty-two percent of its value, and so the number that goes in the brackets here is the decimal value that represents eighty-two percent, so zero point eight two. Okay, so again, this rate here represents that. The car is keeping 82% of its value from year to year, or the car is losing 18% of its value from year to year. So we have made sure that that B value is between 0 and 1, so it's uh, a decay rate. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to have the exponent x here. And in this case, x is representing the number of years since the car was purchased. So now we have an exponential function that we can use to solve the problem. So we want to know what is the value of the car after 30 months. Now, because we've written an equation where x is representing the number of years, we want to first make sure that we change the number of uh, months to uh, a number that's in years so that we can use it in this function equation. So 30 months. If we divide that by 12, because there's 12 months in every year, so 30 over 12, we get 2.5 years. Okay, and so this is the value that we can use for x in this function. Okay, so the value of the car is going to be $24,000 times the decay rate of 0 0.82, and then the exponent is the number of years, which is 2.5. Okay. Remember the rules of bed mass when you're multiplying this out. Uh, so we want to apply the exponent first, so 0 0.82 to the exponent 2.5. Okay, so we do the exponent part first, 0.82 to the exponent 2.5 equals, so that gives us this value. We keep that number in our calculator and do the multiplications. We want to multiply that by 24,000, and we get this number, 14,613 dollars and 22 cents.
So then we can write a nice concluding statement for this problem saying that after 30 months, the car will be worth approximately $14,613.22. All right, here's another problem we can look at. Uh, so on each bounce, a ball rises to 70% of the height from which it fell. How many bounces will it take until the ball rises to only 0.1% of the height from which it was originally dropped? Okay, so again, we want to keep in mind that we're looking at an exponential relationship. We should be able to write the equation using uh, something of this form, where A is the initial value and B is the rate of growth or rate of decay. Now, in this case, because the ball is bouncing to a height that is less than uh, the previous height, uh, because it's bouncing to less than 100% of its height, this is going to be a decay rate, which means the height is decreasing uh, as the number of bounces increase. Um, and in fact, that uh, decay rate is going to be 0 0.7. So we can write that to start out our equation. Uh, let's use h to represent height. Okay. Now we don't actually know the initial height that the ball was dropped from. Uh, and sometimes initial height is given notation similar to this. Uh, this would be referred to as h naught okay, or h with a subscript of zero. Okay. So again, that's uh, a notation that's sometimes used to represent an unknown initial value. Okay. Uh, now our exponent x is going to represent the uh, number of bounces for the ball. Okay, so we've got x representing number of bounces, h represents the height after that particular number of bounces. Okay, so we've got an equation. Now we want to know how many bounces will it take until the ball rises to 0.1% of the height from which it was dropped. We don't actually know the height it was dropped from, uh, but we do have this notation that uh, represents that initial height. And so if we want the height to be 0.1% of that, then we're going to replace the h for the height with 0.001 or 1%, sorry, 0.1% uh, written as a decimal value. So that times the initial height So even though we don't know what the initial height was, we know that we want 0.1% of the initial height. And so we're going to substitute that. Okay. Well, now the great thing about this is that we're going to end up with only one variable because if we now divide both sides by H naught, like this, then we end up with uh, an exponential equation that will only have one unknown value. Okay. So here we'll end up with 0 0.001, and here we get 0 0.7 to the exponent x, okay. because the h naught will divide here, will be 1, and then h naught divided by h naught here is also 1. We end up with this exponential equation. Now, in order to solve this exponential equation, we can either try and make the bases the same, or we can apply logarithms. So here, let's take the common logarithm of the left side and the common logarithm of the right side. Okay. And we know by exponent, or sorry, by logarithm laws that we can take this exponent here and put it in front. And so now we can divide both sides by the log of 0 0.7. So we get x is equal to the logarithm of 0 0.001 over the logarithm of 0 0.7. Okay. And if we use the calculator, so 0 0.001. We want the logarithm of that, and we're going to divide by the logarithm of 0.7.
and we get about 19.37, okay. which means that about 19 bounces are required. Therefore, about 19 bounces are needed. 